Hi, boys and girls. Um, I'm going to read this. Well, this is a book of poetry called They Call Me Quiero. And it's about a Border Kids poems. It's a book of poems by David Bowles. So I've only picked a couple out here. I'm going to read to you. Our House. Our house wasn't ready all at once. Our house took years to grow, like a Monterey oak gone from acorn, to tall and broad and shady tree. My parents saved for years, bought a nice lot on the edge of town, drew up the plans with Teal Mike. One year the family poured the foundation, then the next these concrete walls went up. At last my father built a sturdy roof, and in we moved, finishing it room by room, everyone lending a hand, Every spare penny spent para hacieneros un hogar, a home that glows with warm, that glows warm with love. Now it's like a bit of our souls has fused with the block in the wood. I can't imagine life without this place. On these tiles I learned to walk. Here are my height marks with fading dates, higher and higher. Oh, all the laughs and the tears. All the laughs and the tears we've shared at that table. All the cool movies we've watched sitting on that couch. And here's my room, filled with all my favorite stuff. Sitting in the shade of the anaqua tree I once helped to plant. A modest home, sure, but inside its cozy walls, we celebrate all the riches that matter. So that is a poem, and I, I think it would be called Free Verse because it doesn't always rhyme at the ends. Um, and here's another one that I really like. And I just want to introduce you to poetry because you may be drawn into it. Lullaby. Like lots of border kids, my first song was a lullaby that my abuela sang to warn me and to mystify. My mom says when I got home, smiling without teeth, she took me in her arms and serenaded me Duérmete, mi niño, duérmete, mella, porque viene el cuco y te comerá. Y donde te come, él te llevará hasta su casita que en el monte está. So I learned the dangers of this crazy, mixed-up place. There are monsters lurking, but family lore can keep you safe. That's all I'm going to read for... No, I think I'll read something else. Learning to read. When I was a little kid, my abuela Mimi would ease down into her old creaky rocking chair to tell my cousins and me such spine-tingling tales as ever a pingo fronte zero. Okay, I murdered that word. Crazy fukukes could hope to hear. I always had questions at the end of Mimi's stories. What was that little boy's name? What did his parents do when they found him missing from his room? Is there a special police squad that tracks down monster hands and witch owls and sobbing spirits in order to save the boys and girls that they've stolen? No se, mijo. The story just ends. Happened once upon a time. Nobody knows. But I didn't get it. I was so literal. I believed every story she told was true, so I kept asking my questions guessing at the answers till she broke down at last and told me the greatest truth. You have to learn to read, Gerito. You will only find what you seek in the pages of books. So I began to bug my mom to teach me to read until she did. I was barely five at the time. First day of kinder arrived and I was so excited at all the books my sister said were waiting on the shelves for me. But then the teacher started drawing the letter A on the board, and I soon got it. None of the other kids could read, so she was going to teach us the alphabet one letter per day. Not me. No way. I dropped out of kindergarten, little rebel that I was. And when first grade rolled around, not optional like kinder, the school was so amazed at my skill they put me in a third grade reading class. I got picked on, sure, but I was pretty good and didn't care what the, that the kids called me nerd. 
The school counselor told my folks I can already read at college level, and I've found lots of answers, but also many new questions. Of course, I pass all the state tests with super high scores. Learning in class is easy for me. Dad says all those books rewired my brain, got me ready for study. Just think, I owe it all to those stories my abuelita used to tell us, sitting in a rocking chair as we shivered and thrilled. Even then, words were burrowing into my brain and waiting like larvae in a chrysalis to unfold their paper wings and take me flying into the future. So that is just a little introduction to some poetry. You'll have to check this book out. It is in the fiction under B.O.W. So long.